This is a GCSE video about moments, and this is only for triple IGCSE physics students. Have you ever wondered why door handles are always on the edge of the door, always far away from the hinges? Well, the answer is to do with moments. A moment is a turning force, and a turning force always involves a pivot. A pivot is a point on which the object does not move. So when you're opening a door, the, the place where the hinges are stays in the same place. But you open the door and you close the door, but the hinges don't move. Now they are the pivot in this particular instance. So when we have a pivot, another example is a seesaw in a playground, and you can kind of see that this looks a little bit like that. We can have forces and a force on this bar here will cause it to move around the pivot. In this case, the seesaw will tilt like that. Now notice the pivot is not moving. The place that is attached to the pivot stays in the same place. But the force here causes a turning motion. Okay, and we call that a turning force. Now a moment is a turning force, and a moment is the force times the distance from the pivot. And that's got to be the perpendicular distance. So the force is going here and 90 degrees to the pivot, that's how you make the distance measurement there. So as long as your force is acting at 90 degrees to the, to the pivot, then you have a moment, a turning force. And the moment can be calculated with force times distance. So the bigger the distance, the bigger the turning force. Which is why we try and put door handles as far away from the hinges as possible, because then it needs a smaller force to open the door. To get the same turning force, i.e. the door opening, we need a smaller force, so we don't have to push the door so hard. Now you can also have moments that balance each other. If I get another seesaw example, then you can have a force here, F, and that can be balanced by a larger force here. Let's say that this force here is 100 newtons, and that force is 2 meters away from the pivot. F over here is 3 meters away from the pivot. So what force would we need to perfectly balance this beam? Well, you can work it out using our formula for moments, moment is force times distance, and if it's balanced, then the turning forces, this one on the right, F, is turning the pen clockwise, and the 100 newtons here is turning the pen anti-clockwise. So if we balance the clockwise and the anti-clockwise moments, there will be no movement, it will be in equilibrium. So here, force times distance is 200. Now, because moments is force times distance, we use the units newton meters. And here, we know that the, the moment around this side is going to be the force F times the distance, which is 3. So then we can find F by doing 200 divided by 3. And that gives us our force in newtons. Now, if we have a moment, remember a moment is a turning force. If we have a moment that is not balanced, yeah, it is not in equilibrium, then the object will keep turning. The pivot, remember, stays in the same place. In this case, that's the center of this pen staying in the same place. But it will create a circular motion. Now a circular motion re re requires you to think about vectors and scalars. Vectors have direction and scalars do not. Now we know that velocity 
is a vector. So velocity has a direction. So as this pen is moving around in a circle, the velocity of this thing here is changing because the direction is changing. So here it's going that way, the velocity is going that way, so it's negative. Here the velocity is going that way, so it's positive. And here the velocity is zero this way or this way. So the velocity is constantly changing and we know that acceleration is change in velocity over time. So, if the velocity is changing, then the object must be accelerating. So even if you have something moving in a circle, I'm going to try and swing this in a circle like this. Even if you have something moving in a circle like this, it's got a constant speed. Its speed is not changing, but its velocity is changing, and that means it's accelerating. So it is possible to have something moving at a constant speed, but still accelerating, and that's if it's moving in a circle. And the reason for that is that we've got an important difference between speed and velocity. Now, moments can also make things fall over. Here I have a box of coffee. If I push that this way, I know from my experience that it'll reach a certain point and then it will fall over. Before that certain point, if I let go, it goes back to where it was before. I am creating a moment. The pivot is down here. The bit, that, the bit of the coffee box that's not moving is this corner here. You see it stays in the same place. So I'm creating a moment to make it fall over. Now the reason that sometimes it falls over and sometimes it doesn't is to do with its centre of mass. Now if I draw a diagram of that coffee box, we've got the pivot here. And every object has a centre of mass. Now, the definition of centre of mass is where we is a pl the place in an object where we can imagine that all of the mass of that object is concentrated. Now, that seems like quite a hard to understand definition, but basically, if you imagine any object somewhere inside, there is a point where. It's the very centre of where all the mass is distributed. So the moments going clockwise are exactly the same as the moments going anti-clockwise around that point. Now with things like my coffee box, which has a... Basically, it's, it's full of the same stuff. The centre of mass is right in the middle because it's got a constant density throughout the box. So the centre of mass here is in the middle. Now, if you draw a vertical line downwards from the centre of mass, if it's to the left of the pivot, then that means that the moments are going anti-clockwise. If the centre of mass is to the right of the pivot, like in this example, then the overall moments are going clockwise, and so the box will tip over. If it's, an, if it's the overall moments are anti-clockwise, it will tip back to how it was before. So you can see that centre of mass is important when you're talking about moments of an object because it'll tell you whether or not it's going to tip over. Now if you think about a, a bus, for example, a double-decker bus, a big tall bus, if you have lots of things on the roof and lots of people up at the top, then more mass is near the top, and so the centre of mass is going to be higher up. If the centre of mass is higher up, it's easier for the bus to tip over. Like that. The centre of mass, the, they, they call this line the line of action. So the line of action of the centre of mass is outside of the base, that's the base. If the line of action is outside of the base, the bus will fall over.
If the bus has a very low centre of gravity, a low centre of mass, the bus doesn't fall over. So that's why you're not allowed too many people on the top deck of a bus, and it's why you're not allowed to stand up on the top deck of the bus, because it raises up the centre of gravity, and if you've got too many people standing up on top of the bus, the bus could fall over when it went around a corner, and we certainly don't want that to happen. So you can see that the centre of mass is very important because it affects how the moments are arranged and which moment is more strong, whether it's the anti-clockwise or the clockwise moment. Now, that's very easy for something like my coffee box because the centre of mass is right in the middle, but sometimes you need to find the centre of mass of something that is not perfectly shaped and very easy to understand. Now here I have a very strange shaped piece of foam. Now I'm going to try and find the centre of mass of this unusual shape. Now it's, it's hard to find the exact middle of it, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick a pin through one side and attach a piece of string to that pin with a weight on the bottom. Now if I stick the pin in there, then the the shape will hang down perfectly and the centre of mass is always directly underneath where it's hanging from. So if I draw a vertical line down where my string is hanging, then I, can, I know that the centre of mass is somewhere on that line. Now I'm going to do the same thing again from a different point. Hang the string down. Now I know that the centre of mass is somewhere on that line. And then I'm going to do one more time. Let it hang down. And I'm going to draw another line there. And you can see that all those points meet in the same place. So that place where all the lines meet, that is my centre of mass. And that is how you would find the centre of mass of a random shaped object.